Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. And in this video, we are going to be looking at session management. Uh, more specifically, we're gonna be taking a look at cookie collection. Now, uh, before we move on, I just want to let you guys know that more videos are on their way. Uh, I was restructuring the website and I got all your suggestions and questions. So for those of you who posted questions on the website, don't worry, I will reply to them. Uh, there was just a small issue in regards to how and when they were posted. And there was a bit of an issue with them just being repeated over and over again. Uh, so I sorted that out and I'll be responding to your questions and also to your video suggestions. And don't worry, the Python series and the exploit development series are also going to be continuing. I just want to uh, move on with one and try and finish that before we move on to the other one. That being said, uh, welcome to this video. Welcome back to the web application penetration testing series. Uh, as I said, we're going to be taking a look at session management. And uh, uh, in this video particularly, we'll be looking at cookie collection. All right, so as you know, uh, you probably would have known what a cookie is. Now, there are three types of cookies that we really need to be focusing on uh, in this section and uh, we'll be focusing on in general. The first one is the session cookies, which uh, I'll discuss in a while. We then have the permanent cookies and the third party cookies. So uh, third party cookies are really all to do with uh, third party APIs that may be used. So for example, if you're on a website that utilizes Flash Player, you may find some cookies uh, that um, uh, th that are in in relate uh, that are related to the Flash Player. So it's very important that you understand how to co collect these cookies. And as well, we'll be looking at reverse engineering them, but not really tampering with them because of, I first want to explain to you guys how everything is done. And then we can move on into, um, into finally tampering with them and seeing if we can change them to, to give us access, to give us different type of, of access. And where this comes into play is when you're talking about session cookies. Uh, and in the session uh, cookies, we have the, uh, the, auth the authentication token and the, D, uh, and the unauthenticated token. So, uh, all to do with your access on a web application or on a website. Okay. So, um, essentially uh, all the cookies that you can probably ever get when you visit, uh, uh, you, you get when you visit a website, uh, they are generated when you visit the website. And, uh, furthermore, the cookies change when you authenticate with the website and you, uh, or you log out. All right. So when you log in, you get a different set of cookies and when you log out you get a different uh, set of cookies this is where the whole idea of session management comes into play and how cookies are utilized for this system so uh, i'm currently running oasp's due shop uh, so i showed you guys how to set that up uh, let me know if you found it helpful so i have it set it up and i open i have it open up in my browser now what i'm going to be covering is how to collect these cookies and understanding the difference between an unauthenticated cookie and uh, the authenticated cookie. So uh, usually uh, uh, what I have uh, or what I use to my advantage is if you're using Google Chrome or Firefox, you you can get a cookie uh, collection or a cookie editor add-on that allows you to edit the cookies. But as I said, we're not going to be looking at editing them right now because we don't know what to change in them. This video is going to be focused on collecting them and then analyzing them to see what information they have within them. All right, so I'm, I've currently, I reset this, um, the uh, OWASP juice shop. And the reason I did that is just to start off fresh. And as I said, we're going to be using this uh, for uh, performing all of the examples that I'll be showing you so that we can learn all the concepts. So I'm just going to, uh, but before we log in, I just want to show you the first set of cookies that we'll get once we, well, when we visited the site. Uh, don't worry about the other links. We'll get to them in a second. All right, so I'm using the cookie editor right here. You can find uh, this same one for Firefox. That's what I'm using. There are also other ones for uh, Google Chrome if you want to do that. And in addition, we're not going to be using any proxy uh, like Burp Suite or the OWASP Zap right now because we're just focused on using the browser tools and of course these add-ons here. Uh, so what I can do now is if I just go right click and I hit inspect element, we have uh, the um, the developer tools right here. And uh, if we are to go into, once you've installed the cookie editor, you can directly go into storage and in storage, you'll, you'll be, you'll get the cookies here and uh, other values right here. But if you, uh, it'll be better uh, for you to understand what's going on. If you go into the cookie editor, now in the cookie editor, you can see that uh, we have two cookies that we've gathered here and we have the cookie consent status and uh, the, uh, the IO, which I'm not sure really uh, what it does. 
uh, input output uh, output I'm probably guessing so when it comes down to the cookie consent status we probably get an idea of what uh, of what this is uh, of what this is asking us so when I when I opened up the website it gave me a prompt asking me like all websites will ask you uh, in 2018 to do is to accept their privacy policy uh, in their privacy policies in regards to uh, their use of personal data and cookies and the reason is is because cookies can uh, can log or have a lot of information about you they contain a lot of information about what you what you've been doing so this is why I've uh, created this uh, right now before we move along it's very important to understand their role in session management okay so we need to look at uh, the authentic uh, the, the authentication tokens because that's where uh, most of the magic happens as you would expect so let me just close this up and let me just log in so let me just use the password there the email that I used and the password like so and let me just log in I don't want to save the password so I've logged in now and if I inspect the element again you can see in the cookie editor uh, let that load it usually takes a while to load there we are we have the token now the token this token is an authentication token all right so when it comes down um when it comes down to reverse engineering a, a token for example let's use this as our example we are essentially testing it for vulnerability similar to a penetration test now you might be a little bit confused you might be asking well what 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 do you mean by this how can we perform a penetration test on this token well this token is encoded all right so this is uh, if we just copy this uh, I, I don't know whether you know about this but this is a JSON web token all right so it is it is a JSON web token and you can use the JSON web token decoder I'll be posting this link in the description this is the one that I prefer to use uh, if I am to paste this in here and uh, you can see once I've pasted it in here it's going to give me all information and I'm going to help you understand what we've do just done. So essentially what we have done is we have reverse engineered what this web token is all about. So now we need to look at what co what it contains and what type of uh, authorities or privileges it's giving uh, to us. Because remember, this is an authentication token and it is unique to us because this will uh, this will determine whether or not we are logged into a site or we're logged out and what access we have on the website. I'm pretty sure you already know that. All right. So. When it comes to the header, now this is very important. I've seen many web uh, people claiming to be bug bounty hunters and they don't understand how the, the web token is even structured. What is the header? The header is separated from the payload. This is the header right here. Up until the first full stop, that is the header. It's very important to understand that because they are separated from each other. In fact, the JSON web token is sorted into three parts right here. You have the, you have the header, you then have the payload until here, and then finally, you have the signature, which is right, uh, right at the bottom here, which is also separated from the rest. Okay. So when it comes down to the header, all right, the header is going to give you the type of the, uh, of the token. In, in this case, we know it's a JSON web token. We then have the algorithm, which is the hashing algorithm used, uh, which is, uh, the RS-256 and then the payload. Now in the payload, this is where things get really interesting, as you would have expected. You have the status, uh, the status code here, the data, if any data was passed, the ID. We can always use the ID uh, to, we, we can always edit the ID to see what else it can give us in terms of authentication because different types of identification uh, or identification tokens give us different types of access. So as essentially this is what I was talking about. This is where you will scrutinize the, uh, the, the authentication token and try and, and tamper with it to, to, to see what different results you can, you can get. So remember, we can edit this token, all right? And we can edit anything about it. And then we can finally copy it and, uh, we can use that, uh, in the OS view shop and paste it right here and re-authenticate with that new token and see what results we can get. Now, of course, we're not going to do that right now because I wanted to introduce you as to what information you're going to find and what exactly is going on here. Okay. So one step at a time. So, uh, you can see that something interesting props up here, something extremely interesting. We have the email, which for some reason in this token we can see that it's not very well designed because the email is in plain text which means which means if in in in, in any case or in any scenario someone is is able to get this token uh in which i authenticated with in a site they will have access to my email and my password. But you must be saying, well, I didn't see you type out all of these random passwords here. Well, I can easily guess that this is an MD5 
a hashed password which means i can depending on the uh, on the strength of the password i can decrypt online in a second using any of the decryption tools so if i was to just copy this right now and i wanted to know the password let's say this wasn't even mine this authentication token wasn't even mine and i found the uh, the email and password all i needed to do was unhash the password i can go to md5online.org which is what i use a lot and i paste that hash right in here and i hit decrypt and you can see well first of all it's going to prompt me to enter a capture here storefront uh this is this is getting really annoying now uh for some reason it always does that as you can see it's going to it's going to find the hash and of course this is this is dependent on the difficulty of the hash and whether or not it can find it online okay so you can see that the it will display the hash and the password in plain text which in this case was pass 123 now of course you can experiment with this and you can also experiment if for example the authentication token that you found was using a different uh, encryption uh, or a hashing algorithm for the password the first thing you need to do is identify what it's using and then you go about decrypting it now uh, i'm not going to be talking about the other parts here because that's a bit um that's a bit advanced and as you can see by default the signature uh the, the token signature failed which means we can tamper with this token and we can make changes to it and we can authenticate with it because as i said the OASP view shop is uh is designed to be vulnerable and this is where you perform all of these tests okay so when it comes down to the payload the most important things are to look for the status the id and obviously if you can get any other information in the data section or in in terms of the email and the password that's also very important now of course it's not very easy to get uh, a hold of someone's um of someone's token but you can do it but uh, and uh, then you are performing the the penetration test on the token because if someone was to write in the comment section of this video what if i was to grab the uh, the authentication token that belongs to facebook let's say i had access to someone's computer for a few seconds uh and i was to get the authentication token what would i be able to do well first of all you have to test the security of that token and i can guarantee you that their tokens are going to be very well secured and performing the penetration uh, the penetration test on them will be a different ball game so in the next set of vis videos we'll be looking at changing them or, or tampering them to give us different types of access all right so i hope you found value in this video if you did please leave a like down below if you have any questions or suggestions let me know in the comment section on my social networks or on my website and i'll be seeing you in the next video peace mm -hmm.